Mr. Deputy Speaker, there have been many questions asked about the redoubt tenancies. I welcome the scrutiny, the questions, because financial integrity and probity are critical for Singapore and for anyone standing up here. <clears throat> Without that, we will be finished as a country. And even though I hadn't factored in a CPIB interview as part of my job description, together with the caution, I believe it to be important. As a member of the government, I think it's important that I'm held accountable to Singaporeans and to subject myself and this matter to scrutiny. That is how our system works and must continue to work. No one is above the law. CPIB has investigated on whether I've had any unfair benefit. The CPIB investigations have made clear there was no preferential treatment or abuse of position. The rules were followed. Proper market rental was paid. And Senior Minister Teo's report also makes clear there was no conflict of interest. That is a key point, and I'll come back to that. I'll now answer some questions people have raised with me. Um, some of these questions relate to the choices I made and which are very private. Uh, many will appreciate that the choice of a person's home is typically a personal and private matter. But I am mindful that as an elected official whose authority is conferred on me by the trust of Singaporeans, the lines between what is personal and public may not always be clear, so I will speak of them. The questions I will deal with are, one, why am I living in a rented place in the first place? Uh, why am I not living in my own house? Two, am I making some money renting out my own property while I live in a house rented from the state? Three, the size of the land surrounding the Redoubt House and four, what the Redoubt House is like. And five, was there a conflict of interest? First, why am I renting? I am renting because I decided to put my family home where I was living before June 2018 up for sale. In 2016, I was approaching my 60s, age-wise. I reviewed my finances realized that too much of my savings were tied up in my family home. I had bought the house using my previous income as a lawyer before I became a minister. When I bought my family home, I had assumed a future stream of income based on what I was earning in the private sector. After I became a minister, my income changed, and thus I found too much of my savings was tied up in one house. I was advised it would be wiser not to have most of one's savings in one asset, so I decided to put my family home for sale. Uh, before I proceed further, let me make it clear, I did not consider selling my own home because of financial need. That wasn't the case. And I also do not regret having foregone my previous earnings as a senior counsel. It is a privilege to be in public service, and if I'm asked, I'll make the same choice again. So to prepare for the sale, I decided to move out from my family home and live in a rental property. I looked at several rental properties, including black and white houses. I've long liked black and white houses. And eventually, in 2018, I decided to make an offer for 26 Redout Road. I didn't know the guide rent. I told my agent to assess how much I should offer based on surrounding properties. My agent advised me that $25,000 a month would be a fair offer based on rentals for similar properties at that time, and taking into account the built-up area and the condition of the property. So we offered $25,000. I told my agent I should not be paying less than what my neighbors paid, but I'm not sure exactly when I told him that. SLA came back with a counter offer of 26,500, which we accepted without further negotiations. I had no idea when I accepted SLA's counter offer what the guide rent or the minimum rent was. 
These were decisions internal to SLA that I wasn't privy to. Around the same time, I also rented out my family home while deciding on the sale. It took me a while to decide to sell, and then COVID intervened. My family home was put on the market in November 2021. I'll move to the second question now. It has been asked, am I renting out my family home and in turn living at 26 Redout Road so that I can make some money from the rental difference? The first point, I'm paying market rent for number 26, and that is the critical point. But I will add, in fact, the answer is no. I'm not making any money from the difference in rentals. I pay for the rental of 26 Redout Road, mostly from renting out my family home, but taking into account property tax, because the family home is now non-owner occupied, and two, income tax on the rental proceeds, there is a net deficit. I top up the deficit. I am in essence using my previous lawyer's income to pay for the rental for 26 Redout Road. Based on my current income, I would not have offered to rent 26 Redout Road that is based on my personal approach to finances. I should add, my family home, I think some people know, is a GCB. So I moved from there for the reasons that I have explained. Next, some have asked about the size of the land area. I think the facts have been explained. I did not want the extra land, about 150,000 square feet which is now part of the lease. Indeed, I offered to maintain that land outside of the house boundary at my own cost, because if the outside land was not properly maintained, there would be serious problems for me. But I did not want it as part of the lease. My reason, if you own a landed property, you want a large land area. You benefit from the capital appreciation. But if you are a tenant, any land under your lease becomes your own responsibility, and thus an additional land area of 150,000 square feet means additional legal responsibility. For example, there are large trees in the property. If any of them fell, it could be serious. And that is not theoretical. In 2017, a tree fell on someone in the Botanic Gardens. A person died. Even though the tree had just been inspected and assessed to be healthy the year before. Another issue, mosquitoes, the larger your land, the greater the responsibility for potential health risks, including mosquitoes. I didn't need the land and didn't want it. In fact, uh, to explain my thinking, I'll read out parts of an email which I sent to my agent. Uh, so we have, and I put out a draft for him to send to SLA. Uh, it reads, we have also been discussing the surrounding land. Our client is concerned about the thick vegetation in the shaded area and the disseminities from that land, mosquitoes and very real likelihood of snakes. There will be other animals, but that might be a lesser concern. Currently, SLA maintains this area. Our client will like to propose that the undergrowth in the parts shaded yellow be cleared, <clears throat> leaving only mature trees. Our client will then be happy to maintain this area at his own cost. This will give him some comfort on the health and safety issues while it will save SLA the cost of maintenance of the land. Our client proposes that this arrangement be subject to termination with some notice if either party finds it not feasible for any reason. Uh, the email was not sent in the end because the contents were communicated at a meeting. But SLA took the position that if I wanted to maintain the surrounding land, the surrounding land had to be part of the lease. I did not want to negotiate and agreed to this. Even now, if SLA agrees to take back the extra land, which is more than 60% of the total, 
I would be extremely happy to give it up. And I would be happy to maintain it if SLA agrees, because that's what I wanted to do in the first place. Pay for the maintenance, but not the include the extra land and continue paying the rent we had agreed to until the end of the current contract. There has been, next question, there has been some speculation about the interior set 26 Redoubt Road. After this session, I will share with members and the public some photos of the house before I moved in. These photos were taken by my agent to point out some problem areas to SLA before the tenancy. I will also include current photos of the same places in the house for comparison. Minister Edwin has explained the works that SLA normally does and did. The photos have explanatory notes on the works done by SLA and the works done by me. They are indicative to give us sense of the state of the house and some of the works that were done. There are very few photos. They are not comprehensive. We don't have a full set of the photos on the original condition of the house. Like other black and white bungalows, 26 Redoubt Road required a fair amount of work. It is an old property, and it had been unoccupied for more than four years. There certainly were no chandeliers. I did work on the house to the extent that was allowed. It's a conservation property, so there are limits on what you can do. In all, we spent more than 400000 Actually, on my count, more than $500,000 on improvements, including paying for the car porch and planting many trees. The money that I put in, I knew I would not benefit from it after my lease is over. It would all go back to the state. That is the deal when one rents a black and white, and I knew that. Finally, there is the important question of conflict of interest. The CPIB investigation and review have made clear there was no conflict of interest, no breach of rules, and everyone acted properly and honestly. Yes, SLA is a min-law stat board, but I took myself completely out of this matter. Conflict of interest means I make a decision in a matter where I have an interest. I have an interest in the tenancy, obviously, but I made no decision for SLA on the matter, either SLA or min-law and I took steps to deal with any perceived or potential conflict of interest. On my part, I told my agent everything had to be done strictly in accordance with the rules. I spoke with the then Senior Minister of State at Min Law, Ms. Indrani, and the then Deputy Secretary at Min Law. I told them that I was looking at black and white bungalows. I asked SMS Indrani whether if any issue comes up to the ministry, could she handle it? She agreed. I also said that if she needed to check anything, she could go to Senior Minister Teo, and that I will tell SM Teo this. Senior Minister of State Indrani told me that she would check with SM Teo if she needed to. And I told the then DS admin law that I'm recusing myself in this matter. SMS Indrani will deal with the issues if they arise, and if she needed to, she will check with SM Teo. And I told SMTO that I was looking at possibly renting a black and white bungalow and that if any issue comes up, SLA Min Law will check with SMS Indrani and if she needed to, she will check with SMTO. And he agreed. I did that because SMTO is senior to me and this way there would be a chain of command which did not involve me. For SLA to check with SMS Indrani and SMTO if there were issues on which SLA wanted guidance. And I also told my agent that on this matter, I had spoken with SMS Indrani and SMTO, and if any issue arose, SLA will go to them to check. And I believe my agent so informed the SLA officers dealing with the lease. I took these steps, although rental issues don't come up to ministers in the usual course. Nor in this case, as it transpired, did anything go up to Minlaw, SMS Indrani, or SMTO for guidance or decision. So no actual conflict. I removed myself completely from the decision-making process. And no potential or perceived conflict either because I had recused myself. There is some confusion on this. And some people think there is act, uh, potential or perceived conflict. Actually, actual potential or perceived conflict can only arise where I have an interest in a matter 
I make a decision on the matter, then that will be actual conflict. If I have an interest and I remain able to make a decision, even though I do not actually make any decision, there can be potential or perceived conflict of interest. But once I recuse myself, I can't make a decision, nor am I potentially able to make a decision. I think members heard Senior Minister Teo earlier. In conclusion, I would like to say that I'm sorry that Parliament's time has been taken, taken up to address these issues which arose out of a personal decision I made to rent a home. I know that there are many important things that we have to deal with as a nation. I am, like my colleagues, fully committed to working with Singaporeans to address the issues that matter to them. I will answer any question you have because it's important that we do the right thing and to hold ourselves up to high standards of integrity. I did not enter public service to maximize my earnings or try and pay less than I should to the state. Thank you, Deputy Speaker.